Hi, my name is Chris Hedinger with Applied Information Sciences. Today I'm going to be covering a potential disaster recovery plan you could utilize for Amazon Web Services. Depending on your environment, it may or may not be a good fit. This is a very simple and cheap um, disaster recovery plan. Uh, first, I want to kind of go over some of the terms um, used in AWS. You might hear today, I'm just so you know what they are. Uh, first of all is EC2. Uh, which is a lot Amazon Elastic Computer Cloud, um, which basically refers to a virtual server room, if you will. Um, traditionally, when you or when you buy, you know, traditionally, if you were to open up a business and you required some IT assets, uh, you would, might set up a small server room and that, that would have racks and servers and networking cable and, and different pieces of routing equipment and whatnot. Um, this is a an EC2 is basically your virtual server room, if you will. Um, next is an AMI, which is an Amazon machine, machine image. Um, this is a virtual machine, uh, an, an image of a virtual machine that runs inside of your server, your EC2. Um, the actual, the actual AMI is really the, referring to kind of the, the actual image file. And, and when you start it up, that's an instance um, of that image running inside of the server room, but it's just a technicality. Um, Next is a VPC. The VPC is a virtual private cloud. Um, the simplest terms of VPC is kind of like um, if you've ever set up a network at your house, um, you install a router and plug your cable modem into it and you plug in your laptop and your desktop and whatnot. Um, you basically you are setting up a private network um, where all the machines in your network talk to each other, but they all, they all share a, a common gateway to the internet. And the rest of the world sees your sees only one one IP address um, on the outside, whereas you'll have many you know many many IP addresses on the inside shared between your machines, and and a VPC is kind of a virtual representation of that. Um, Elastic IP is a IP that a static IP a public IP that the rest of the world can communicate with that Amazon. Um, AWS assigns to you that you can point at one or one machine on your inside of your inside of your VPC. So it basically allows you to take your VPC, uh, work within it, and but still provide outside access if you, if you, if if you require that. Uh, for the implementation that we're that we'll be working with in this example, um, there are three main servers. It's it's basically a SharePoint environment. And it's a, there's a Active Directory domain controller, um, which is basically used for usernames and password and user profile information, um, and and really nothing else. Um, none of the you know global uh, GP, uh, GPOs or anything any of that kind of stuff is really being leveraged. Um, it's just being used for to to back up SharePoint. Really. Um, so the second server is a SQL Server database. Um, which of course houses all the databases that, for, that are required for SharePoint, as well as a couple of you know, some external databases um, that that might run, you know, with external data. Um, and last is the SharePoint server. This is where the actual SharePoint application runs. Um, and that and those three servers are all in the same domain, and they're all kind of grouped together, if you will. Um, the the fourth machine is a file a file server. Uh, you could call it an automation server. You could call it a script server. There's a number of ways, a number of things you call it. But basically, its its purpose is to uh, run all the time, <clears throat> and it is what runs the PowerShell scripts that will go out and perform actions against the other three servers to create um, uh, snapshots and, and, and images and whatnot. So the basic backup strategy is. Um, using Amazon Web Services to take daily snapshots with the servers online uh, using PowerShell scripts um, use, and then weekly snapshots with the servers offline and then monthly AMIs with the servers offline. So the daily snapshots are pretty straightforward and uh, simple. There's uh, basically a, a script will fire off um, probably in the middle of the night create a snapshot of, the, of each instance, each so of each server, each of the three servers, um, and then go out and delete any snapshots older than five days. I mean, there's no need to, to keep uh, 
too many of these these images lay around. Plus, it costs money to uh, to keep them as well. Um, and last note, last note, it'll send out an email um, notifying administrators. You know, if there was success or any failures, any errors that occur, so they can uh, deal with them accordingly. Um, weekly snapshots is a little more complicated. Um, the scripts will actually go out and stop each instance first, um, and then create a, a snapshot of each instance, and they have to start those instances back up. Um, and then go out and delete any snapshots older than four weeks. So that way, at this point, you'll have, any given time, you'll have uh, snapshots available for the last five days or four weeks, or weekly um, snapshots for the last four weeks. And it is, as well, it'll go out and notify any administrators via, via the email. Um, and last, but not least, is the monthly uh, AMI. Um, it's similar to the weekly, but except for it's every month and it's an AMI. It'll basically stop each instance. It'll create an AMI of each instance, then start each instance, and then delete uh, any monthly snapshots that are older than one year. Um, so that way we'll have five days, four weeks, or one year available to restore from. Um, there's probably a good chance that we really wouldn't need need uh, anything that old, but just in case. Um, last but not least, it'll notify um, administrators um, of the... Of any errors that may have occurred, or, or the, you know, if the, the backup was a success. Um, again, this is just a this is a very simple, cheap um, uh, backup strategy that, um, depending on your environment, you could you could leverage. And uh, in the next video, we will um, in part two we will uh, actually go over the um, go over the Amazon Web Services interface a little bit and look at some of the different areas and and how it works. Uh, thank you.